Praise God. Morning, church. Are you okay? Morning. And uh, if you're joining us online this morning, welcome. Uh, joining us here at Leicester Elim, we, uh, we're pleased to see you. We're pleased to have you with us. And uh, everyone that's here this morning, bless you. It's great to be here, isn't it? You know, uh, today is full of possibilities. Endless possibilities in God. You know, God's not limited. We've said this before. God isn't limited in any way, shape, or form. What limits, what limits sometimes is our engagement with God, our openness to Him, our, our, our availability to allow God to move in us and through us. And, uh, you know, sometimes we hold back, <laughs> uh, especially if, you, if you're British, okay, and uh, I know there are a lot of our congregation that aren't, but, you know, British people are very reserved, and we, we hold back a little bit. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, God doesn't want us to hold back. You know, God wants us to be wholehearted in who we are, in our love for Him, in our life for Him, in our worship for Him, and, uh, and just to celebrate the fact that, you know, we are born again by the Spirit of God. Yeah, and God is with us. You know, it says in uh, the book of John, just briefly, two little verses. Jesus says this to his disciples in John 14, verse 16. He says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, because he abides with you, and will be in you. You know, the Holy Spirit is in us, isn't he? If we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, if we've accepted him, the Word of God says that he dwells in us with the temple of the Holy Ghost. But not only that, he promises to be with us. The Word of God says that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the very midst of them. And so today, God is here by his Holy Spirit and... Uh, God wants to move amongst us, speak to us and through us. Uh, we're going to speak through the Word of God later. But let's worship Him this morning, shall we? Let's pray. Lord, we thank You for the opportunity of being together. We thank You, Lord God, for the freedom and the liberty that we have to be able to gather together in Your name. We thank You, Lord God, that we are a church that is made up of many tribes and many nations, Lord God. Lord, we have many different nationalities here, but Lord, our common bond is in Christ Jesus. Lord, you have redeemed us, you have saved us, Lord, you have brought, brought us back, and Lord, we want to thank you for all that you've done for us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning. We acknowledge your presence here this morning, and Lord, we thank you, because Lord, you want to speak to us today. Lord, help us to hear what it is that you want to say to us this morning. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's stand together and first of all, let's welcome Etienne back, shall we? <laughs> Come on, let's stand together Thank and you. let's worship Thank God. You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Praise you. God. Thank you. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same since you came near. From the everlasting to the world we live, the Father's only Son. Come on, church. And you live, and you die, and you rose again on high, and you opened the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah. For all in the hallelujah. Let's sing it again. My Savior. My Savior. Lifted me from the miry clay. Oh, my Come on. I will never be the same as the you gave me. Oh, from the everlasting to the world we live. Father's only son. Oh, and you live and you die. 
But you rose again on high And you opened the way For the world to live again Hallelujah For all you have done Let's put our hands together Hallelujah We say Redeemer Come on. Forever. And I will Hallelujah. never be the same since you came near. From the everlasting to the world we live. The Father's only Son. And you lived and you died and you rose again on high. And you open the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah for all you've done. For you live, and you live, you live, you died, and you rose again on high. And you open the way. For the world to live again, hallelujah, for all you've done. And you live, you live, you die, and, and you rose again on high, and you open the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah for all you done. Come on. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Praise God. For all what he's done for us. Yes, Lord. He lived and he died and he rose again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's a living God that we serve. Yes, Lord. And he's a God. Thank you, God. That says, Amen. And it happens. Amen. Thank you. Glory to and God. And His word is yea and amen. amen. So let's give Him all the glory. Let's thank Him. Yes, Lord. Let's amen. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who we we thank you, you for all you have done. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. 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 You are here. We come oh, before you this morning, committing our breath in who are not feeling well. Oh, yes, Lord, so we are here. Yes, Lord, you are here. Father God, we know yes, Lord, you are here. Yes, Lord, that's it. Lord, you are here. Let's be your hope. Thank you, Lord. 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 Please join us as we sing this beautiful hymn. We stand amazed in his presence this morning for all he has done for us. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love. Come on, church. How marvelous, how wonderful in my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me.
church. Oh, how wonderful, how wonderful is my soul shall never be. How wonderful, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. If the angels be helping and came from Oh, how marvelous, how wonderful and awesome shall it be, how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior, His love for me. your voice this morning. Let's lift our voice with our music. Let's sing how marvelous, how wonderful shall be. How marvelous, how Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 that nothing will ever separate you from the love of God. His love is so deep, is so wide, is so high that nothing in the present, in the future will ever separate you from his love. Nothing you are facing, nothing you've been going through, no disease, no financial crisis, no relationship will ever separate you from his love. His love is so deep that he loves you till the end. We can just focus on his love this morning. He's ever faithful to his word. He is faithful till the end. No matter what we face, no matter what we go through, he is still faithful. And we can worship him as a faithful God. As a faithful God.
thou, Lord. For thou, O Lord. I will Lord. You are high. Hallelujah. Above all the earth. Lord, there's no one else like you. Blessed be your name. <laughs> thou, thou art, art exalted. exalted. Thou art exalted, Lord. Horrible, all oh gods. Oh, oh, God. We exalt you, Lord. I exalt thee, Lord. We exalt thee. Oh, I, I exalt thee. I exalt thee, Lord. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh. You know, there's, there's something very unique about being a Christian. You know, in heaven, constantly there's praise and the, and the angels, you know, around the throne and they're singing, they're singing around the throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. But you know, there's something unique about being a Christian. The angels do not know what it is to be redeemed. They do not know what it is to have been lost and then saved. They've never had that experience of being the redeemed of the Lord. And yet they are there and they worship around the throne. But they've never been redeemed. They've never been saved. Right? But we have. Yeah? Yeah? And if that doesn't excite you this morning to worship God, I don't know what does. Because actually, friends, we were lost. We were lost. We were lost without Christ. But He's redeemed us. He's brought us back with a price. And we are the redeemed of the Lord. And the redeemed of the Lord say, Here you go. And so come on this morning, let's worship Him as we sing this. You know, in a, in a few hours' time, just down the road, there's going to be 30-odd thousand people shouting and cheering a football team. Yeah, they'll be lifting their hands and waving them to the, the first match of the season. This is not our first match of the season. 
right? But I want to say, friends, we've got something to be excited about this morning. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He's our Redeemer. He's our Savior. He's our Healer. He's our Deliverer. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, I exalt Thee. I exalt the Lord. I exalt Thee. Oh, I exalt Thee. Oh, I exalt the Lord. I exalt You, Lord. And I exalt Thee, oh, and I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, oh, Come on, come on. I exalt the Lord. I exalt the Lord. I exalt the Lord. We lift up your name. The name above every name. The name of Jesus. Love is alive. Pastor De, please lead us. The Lamb worthy is the Lamb worthy is the Lamb. Let's sing it again. Come on, worthy. Oh, worthy is the Thank you, Lord. Oh, holy is the Lamb. Oh, and holy is the Lamb. I said, holy, holy is the Lamb. Jesus is the Lamb. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Oh, Jesus is the Lamb. Oh, Jesus, Jesus is the Lamb. Oh, yes, Lord. Jesus is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Kuba ba 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 di ke si de baranda da ba sanda da na. Uda ba na 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 maronde baby ana na ma sante de. Iyo na maronde kina maranda. Come on, let's lift our voices, friends. Come on, let's lift our voices to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Majesty on High, our Redeemer. Hallelujah. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify your holy name, O Lord. Lord, there is no one who is like unto you. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Thank you, Lord. Father God, Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank
Jesus, 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 I worship you. you. Yeah. You are here. You are here. Walking in, in this place. place. Oh, I worship you. you. Yes. I worship, I worship you. you. You are here. You are here. Moving, moving in our midst. I worship you. you. I worship, I worship you. You, you are here. here. You're working in this place. place. I, I worship you. you. I, I worship you. you. For you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, for you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. And you're turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here. And you're mending every heart. Oh, I, I worship you. Come on. I, I worship you. Because you. you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are, for you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That's who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who.
That is who you are, Lord. <laughs> it is who you are. Lord, even when we don't see it, Amen. you're working. Even when we don't feel it. Yes. Lord, forgive us. Lord, if we go become a people of feeling. <laughs> Lord, but even when we don't feel it, you're working. Amen. Why? Because that is who you are. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Miracle worker. Amen. Healer. A saviour. Amen. A deliverer. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Because you are, you are here this morning. Lord, we want to come around your table this morning. We want to remember what you've done. And those that are coming to help this morning, if you don't mind coming and maybe taking the cloth off, that would be great. Just come and help us. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we are redeemed. We've been bought with a price, friends. The Word of God tells us we are not our own because we've been bought with a price. <laughs> you see, there's nothing, there is absolutely nothing that we could do to find our way back to God. Not paying penitence, not, not buying whatever, what, what, nothing. We could do nothing. We were separated from God. Our sin had done that. But God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for us upon the cross. Why? To pay the penalty for our sin. To redeem us, to buy us back to God. And this morning as we come around the table of the Lord, we, the redeemed of the Lord. <laughs> wow. Lord, we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. Lord, for what you accomplished on the cross because you made a way where there was not a way. Waymaker. Waymaker. Lord, we looked across the gulf between us and, you and God and there was no way. But, but Lord, Heavenly Father, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, you came. Born of a, born of a virgin. Emmanuel, God with us, lived amongst us, demonstrated the kingdom of God amongst us, but always keeping his eyes fixed upon the cross. And Jesus, we want to say thank you for being obedient to the Father, for dying for us, to redeem us, to pay the penalty for our sins that we might have access once again to God the Father. And you rose again victorious over sin, death, and hell on the third day. And now you sit at the Father on high. But Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence being here this morning. Praise God. Lord, as we take these emblems this morning, as we take this bread, Lord, your bread, your body that was broken for us, represented by this bread, Lord, we take it and eat it and we remember you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of the living God. Shiba Baba Bokusu de Diberanda. Lead us, lead us to Jesus. To worship you. Worthy is the Lamb. Come, Holy Spirit.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we take this cup, we thank you. Lord, it represents your blood, your blood that was shed for us. Lord, we can't imagine, begin to imagine, Lord, what you went through for us. But we want to say thank you. We want to remember what you've done. We want to proclaim it. We want to proclaim, Lord, what you have done for us. And say thank you this morning. In the name of Jesus, receive this cup. Amen. My sin and shame don't count anymore. Praise to the one who has ransomed my soul. Because Calvary covers it all. Calvary, yes, it covers it all. My sin and shame don't count anymore. Oh, praise to the one who has ransomed my soul because Calvary covers it all. Calvary. Oh, has covered it all, my sin and shame, they don't count anymore. Oh, praise to the one who has ransomed my soul, because Calvary covers it all, dear Lord. He carried the cross for all of my debts. He paid the cost, salvation complete. Now forever I'm free. Yes, Lord, because Calvary covered it all. Oh, and Calvary. Oh, it's coming it all My sin and shame They don't count anymore Oh, praise to the Thank one you, Lord. Who is right Thank you, Lord. my soul Because Calvary covers it all No Calvary has covered it all my sin and shame don't count anymore oh praise to the one who has ransomed my soul because calvary covered it all thank you let's stand together friends come on Praise God. Let's exalt Him. He 
is faithful to save a bird in the bed because Calvary covers it all. Oh, and Calvary, oh, has covered it all. My sin and shame don't count anymore. Oh, praise to the one who has ransomed my soul. Calvary covers it all. Oh, Calvary covers it all. My sin and shame don't anymore. Oh, praise to the one who has ransomed my soul. Calvary covers it all. Oh, praise the one. Oh, praise to the one who has ransomed my soul. Calvary covers it all. Come on. Calvary deserves a clap this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please take your seats just for a couple of minutes. Um, I want to pray for Patricia this morning. Come on out, Doc. And uh, I call everybody Duck. Okay. It's an, a term of endearment. It's not that you're quackers. Okay. But uh, in Derbyshire, it's... Uh, and in Leicester. Is that what you're saying, Leicester? Well, praise God, I'm not out there. But this young lady here <laughs> is, uh, is going home for two months at least, eh, uh, to Malawi, uh, fantastic country, and uh, we just want to pray for her, and over the last few weeks, bless her, she's stood in for Justina, Justina's been in po Poland, we're going to pray for her uncle in a moment, but um, just, just making sure everything's right in the church, well done, thank you, you do a great job, and uh, we want to say thank you, but we want to pray for you, and pray God's favor and blessing on you as you go home. Lord, we just thank you. Lord, that uh, wherever we go, you are with us. Lord, and we, we know that you've gone before, Patricia. Lord, and we pray, Lord God, that as she goes home, Lord, for this extended period, not seen her family for 17 years, Lord, we pray your blessing upon her. We pray this will be a blessed time. Pray, Lord God, it will be a fruitful and prosperous time. Lord, have your hand upon her. Keep her safe. Keep her in good health. Lord, and we look forward to the time that she's back with us. And so, Lord, bless her, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Bless you. <laughs> 17 years. That's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, I was young 17 years ago. And now look at me. I know. It's somebody's birthday. Come on. So it's... Oh, sorry, just, oh, whoa. Got you. Got you. No, you can't do that because that means if you do that, I've got to do this. Yeah, so we both need to look in the same direction. And I can't turn my head round. Okay, okay. So we're going to sing happy birthday to you, okay. Look at these people out here, okay. Do you want them to sing happy birthday? How old are you? How old will you be? Go on, tell them. I'll tell them if you don't. Four. Okay. So we're going to sing happy birthday to Josiah. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you going to sing, sing loud, guys? Okay. Because you can send them out to Sunday school in a minute. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Josiah. Happy birthday to you. Lord, we, we pray for Josiah. Lord, as young as he is. Lord, we pray, Lord God, not only your hand upon him to keep him, Lord, in good health and strength, but we pray that he will grow up to be a great man of God. 
We pray that your hand would be upon him. We pray that your Holy Spirit would be upon him to, Lord, in, in future years to lead him and guide him. Lord, and we pray your blessing upon him. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that he'll grow up to be in a place of, of, uh, of, of favor, Lord, but in a, a place of authority that he'll be able to influence things godly for you and for, for, for this nation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are you ready? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, I'm going to ask you, after three, to say, uh, Kingdom Kids. Are you ready? Do you think you can do that? Yeah. What you got to say? Kingdom Kids. I know you forgot already, haven't you? I could see that. <laughs> I could see it on your face. Or, shall we just count to three? Just count to three. One, two, three, go. Go. <laughs> Off you go, guys. Bless you. Have a great time. Praise God. Oh, you've got to go as well, haven't you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> Praise God. God's good. And uh, the, the youth are going upstairs. If you want to go out upstairs, youth. And uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Bless you, mate. Well, um, you know, I know this man always brings a word from God. And that's not to put pressure on him, but I know he does. He's, um, but uh, let's just thank Richard as he comes this morning to minister to us and bless us with the word of God. Thank you, Richard. God is good. All the time. That worked better than I thought. <laughs> well, welcome, church. And also welcome to those watching online. And a special welcome to my sister who may be watching online now or a bit later. <laughs> Thank you. Let's just ask God's blessing on his word. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us your word. Your word that makes us, Lord, wise unto salvation. Your word that leads and guides. Your word that provides everything we need, Lord, for godliness. And we ask, O oh God, as we turn now to your word, that you would speak to every heart and every mind that will listen to this word. Lord, touch hearts and lives through your word. May it bring forth that which you have purposed for the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Well, just over a week ago, me and my wife went to the cinema. <laughs> Not been for quite some time. We went to watch the new railway children film. Before the film began, uh, they had all these mobile phones going. And then suddenly, it went silent. And he said, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> <laughs> it wanted you, you see, to forget everything else and to immerse yourself in the story, in the film. So for the next two hours, no mobile phone. I want to encourage you this morning to immerse yourself in the biblical story that we're going to look at. It's two very different processions. And I want you to try and imagine or picture the scene of each procession. Now, the first procession 
is a funeral. We live in a world where everything is dying. Plants die. Don't know if you've ever been given a plant and if you haven't got green fingers, after a little while it's died on you. Animals die. Birds, fish, even stars. And of course, as humans, one day we will all die. I trust you're not depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with the story, it does have a happy ending. just going to read one verse from scripture which I'm not going to ask you to put up which just tells you a little bit about this funeral it says approaching the town gate a dead person was being carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and a large crowd from the town was with her. It's hard to imagine a more hopeless or sad situation. Don't know if you, you probably have been to a funeral. They seem to me to have changed a little bit now. They seem to be a bit more about the celebration of someone's life. Years ago, perhaps most people used to dress in black. But I want you to imagine the scene. There's a procession coming. And at the front of the procession, under Jewish custom, at the front of the procession would be the next of kin, which in this case would be this lady. The coffin would be behind her, and then behind them would be the rest of the mourners. And although you didn't read it in that verse, the woman is weeping. The woman is weeping. We've read in that story, in that one verse, first of all, that she was a widow. She had already buried her husband. And then we read that the funeral is of her only son. She's now going to be burying her only son. What grief and sorrow must have filled her heart. I understand it was also the custom of the Jews in that time for people to leave what they were doing and to join the back of a funeral procession. So as the ladies walking towards the grave with the coffin behind her and other mourners and then lots more people would gather. We read there was a large crowd going with her. And I suppose given the circumstances of this woman, the fact that she'd lost her husband, and now she'd lost her only son, it's no wonder there was a lot of empathy and a large crowd would be following her. And in addition to her grief, this widow faced an uncertain future. She faced a lifetime, probably, of poverty. You see, there's no welfare state. And in those customs, the children would look after the parents in their old age. And she'd lost her only means of support. She had lost now her only son, as well as her husband. 
Now, the Jews actually did make provision in their laws for looking after widows and orphans. Just to look up at a couple of verses, Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 14, verses 28 and 29 We read these verses. At the end of every three years, bring all the tithes of that year's produce and store it in your towns. So that the Levites, who have no allotted allotted to them and any inheritance of their own, and the foreigners, the fatherless, and the widows who live in your towns may come and eat and be satisfied. And so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. And again in Deuteronomy 24, verses 19 to 22, we read, When you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheaf, do not go back to get it. Leave it for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat the olives from your trees, do not go over the branches a second time. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. When you harvest the grapes in your vineyard, do not go over the vines again. Leave what remains for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. This is why I command you to do this. So there was provision in the Jewish law for people like widows and orphans. But as you read through your Bible, you realize that although there were these provisions, they didn't always get carried out. In fact, if you read in Matthew 23, seven woes that Jesus proclaimed against the Pharisees, one of them was for devouring widows' houses. One of Job's comforters cruelly accused him of sinning against widows when they said, and you sent widows away empty-handed. And the first problem, if you like, in the church in Acts chapter 6 related to widows in that some of the Grecian widows were being left behind in the daily distribution of food. So despite these provisions, this woman faced not only grief, but a a lifetime of poverty and living off charity, really. Public charity. Don't know if you can enter in to her grief and sorrow. I don't know what situations you are facing. I don't know what difficulties in your life you may be going through, or whether you can empathize or you've got points of connection with this widow. Perhaps you are grieving. Perhaps you are worried about your job, so you're worried about financial, your financial situation. Perhaps you're just worried about the future what the future might hold, given that there's wars in our land, wars in Ukraine is still going on. People are struggling with their bills. Perhaps you have other concerns. Perhaps you have addictions. Perhaps you have low self-esteem. Perhaps you're worried just about your weight, or depression, or health. But scripture says, don't despair. Hope thou in God. So that's the first procession. It's a procession of death. But there's another profession, procession, a second one. It's coming in the opposite direction. And these two processions are about to collide. The story that I'm referring to is found in Luke chapter 7 
verses 11 to 17. And at the top of your Bible it might say, a widow's son. Luke chapter 7, I'm just going to read the story to you now from verse 11 down to verse 17. I'm reading from the NIV. It says, Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people, and the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. The first procession was headed by a widow who had lost her husband and her only son. This second procession coming from the other direction is headed by Jesus, the author of life, the sustainer of life, the creator of life. You see, the day before, I think it says in the King James Version, the day before this event, Jesus had healed the centurion's servant. He did it without even going to the house. Don't know if you remember the story, but the servant said, you don't need to come to my house, you just need to say the word. And Jesus said, that he'd not found so great a faith anywhere in Israel. In chapter 5 of Luke, you read how Jesus had healed somebody with leprosy, how he'd healed the paralytic. In chapter 6, you read how on the Sabbath day, he heals a man with a withered hand and gets into trouble with the Pharisees. And then in chapter 6, carried on, you read about the Sermon on the Mount, or Jesus, Luke's account of that sermon. And then into chapter 7, you get the healing of the centurion, and then you get this story, the story of the widow of Nain. And we read that this procession of Jesus, there's disciples and a large crowd. So can you imagine the scene? I wonder what they were talking about. There's Jesus coming this way. And instead of being somber and weeping and crying, I expect there was excitement. I expect there was expectation. They're coming this way. And his disciples and his, the crowd of people are with him. And I bet they're wondering, what is Jesus going to do next? We've heard his teaching. We've heard his words. Such great teaching from the Sermon on the Mount. How we should pray. How we can, speaking about how we could be blessed. Speaking about building your house upon the rock and not upon the sand. About the broad way and the narrow way. They'd seen the miracles. They'd seen his confrontation with the religious leaders, the Pharisees. I expect they were chattering away, wondering what he was going to do next. And he's coming this way. And the funeral processions come in that way. And these two processions are about to collide. And as we mentioned, 
It would be the widow that would be leading the funeral procession. And Jesus would therefore meet the widow first. And of course, she's weeping. She's crying because of her loss. And the first thing we read when these two processions collide is that Jesus' heart went out to her. That's what the NIV says. It says, when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her in compassion. The King James Version says compassion. It says, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And friends, we have a high priest who is able to sympathize with us because he knows what it is to be human. Because he left his heaven above to come to this earth to live as a man and ultimately to give his life for our salvation. Whatever you are facing, God knows. And the first thing I want to tell you is that his heart goes out to you. Jesus has compassion upon you and whatever you are facing. The next thing Jesus says and does is really a bit strange. Well, it's not a bit strange, it's extraordinary. And if anyone else did it, it would be cruel. You see, because the next thing we read, we read that his heart goes out to her, and he says, don't cry. Here's a woman who's lost her husband, lost her son, and Jesus says, don't cry. We read towards the end of the story these words, God has come to help his people. And the reason Jesus could say don't cry was he'd come. He'd come to this woman's situation to help her. He could do what no one else could do. And I want to tell you this morning God is here. The Bible says, and it's been mentioned, I think, already, where two or three are gathered, God is in the midst. We have it on the authority of the Word of God that God is here. And He is here to help you. Then, after saying, Don't cry, He stops the funeral. He stops the funeral. We read, then he went up and touched the coffin and those carrying it stood still. It's quite an amazing thing to do, interrupting a funeral. It would be a breach of Jewish law and custom. And touching the coffin or touching a corpse would expose Jesus to uncleanness ceremonial and ritual uncleanness. We read in Numbers chapter 19, verse 11 to 16, the result of such uncleanness. Whoever touches a human corpse will be unclean for seven days. They must purify themselves with the water on the third day and on the seventh day, then they will be clean. But if they do not purify themselves on the third and seventh day, they will not be clean. If they fail to purify themselves after touching a human corpse, they defile the Lord's tabernacle. They must be cut off from Israel because the water of cleansing has not been sprinkled on them. They are unclean and their uncleanness remains on them. This is the law that applies when a person dies in a tent. Anyone who enters the tent and anyone who is in it will be unclean for seven days. And every open container without a lid fastened on it will be unclean. 
anyone out in the open who touches someone who has been killed with a sword or someone who has died a natural death or anyone who touches a human bone or a grave will be unclean for seven days. Jesus touched the coffin and stopped the procession. Jesus was willing to pay the price of ritual impurity to meet the widow's need. And Jesus is willing to come to wherever you are in your situation to meet your need. Jesus says, Young man, I say, get up. That must have been some sight. Can you imagine there being there? These two processions have just collided. He's told the widow not to weep. He stopped the coffin. And then he says to the young man, get up. Because Jesus is the author of life. And he gives him back to his mother. So what's the message that I really want to bring from this story? And it's this. That Jesus is still in the resurrection business. Jesus can bring back to life things in your life that have died or are dying. The God who can raise the dead can put hope back into the hopeless. The God who can raise the dead can bring back to life faith that has died. The God who can raise the dead can restore broken relationships. The God who can raise the dead can bring back gifts and ministries and talents that perhaps have been neglected and died. Before we become a Christian, we're said to be dead in our trespasses and sins. And if you don't know Jesus, the Bible says that you are dead in your trespasses and sins. You see, our relationship to God has been broken because of our sin. But Jesus came to resurrect that dead relationship. And we need a spiritual new birth. That's what the Bible says. The Bible tells us that we must be born again. It's a work of God. We can't give ourselves a new heart and a new spirit. It's God who takes away our hold on and puts a new heart within us and puts his spirit within us. It's God who brings that word and brings it to life as you allow it to get into your heart and your soul. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. It's the work of God the Holy Spirit, friends. You must come to the cross because salvation is found in no one else. You must come to the cross You must confess your sin. You must ask God to give you this new life in Christ Jesus. And God will restore that relationship with him. Did you know Christians can fall out? (laughs) Do you remember Paul and Barnabas? They had a falling out. Acts chapter 15, verse 36 to 41. He had a falling out over a a man called John Mark. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preached of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia, 
and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. We read a bit later on in the Word of God that Paul and John Mark must have sorted their differences because we read in Timothy, Paul says, Only Luke is with me. Get Mark, which is the John Mark, and bring him with you because he is helpful in my ministry. Jesus can heal broken relationships. Whether it's with a Christian, whether it's with your family, He is able to bring back that relationship that has died. Jesus can resurrect gifts and talents and ministries that have died or are dying. You probably know the story of Samson and Delilah. I think sometimes we're a bit quick to judge Samson Harshly. And I'll tell you why in a minute. You see, his first marriage, or betrothed marriage, was to a Philistine. Not Delilah, another Philistine woman. But we actually read in Judges that it was actually from the Lord. If you turn to Judges chapter 14... We're going to read verses 1 to 4. His parents were not happy about it because that custom in those days was that they would marry a Jew because of the family inheritance laws and various things like that. And obviously the Jew would be of the same culture and religion. But we read, Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all your people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines, for at that time they were ruling over Israel. And if you read Samson's story in Judges chapter 14 and 15, before the encounter with Delilah, you read on three occasions that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power, it says, And in fact, at the end of Judges chapter 15 and verse 20, you read these words about Samson. Samson led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistine. He was a judge for 20 years. And then, as you get into the next chapter, chapter 16, is when you find the story of Samson and Delilah. And I've got a warning then for gentlemen. When you see a pretty or attractive woman, don't be stupid. (laughs) Okay? And ladies, if you've got a man who's so besotted with you, treat him kindly. (laughs) Don't be stupid. You see, his love for Delilah was, of course, his big downfall. But the reason I say he's stupid is if you read the story, Delilah's trying to get the secret of his strength. And three times, Samson tells her a lie, or the untruth. And three times, Delilah applies what he says. And on each occasion, the Philistines come out of their hiding places 
and Samson breaks free and just kills all the Philistines. He gets, you know, he, uh, he has a fight and he beats up all the Philistines. You would think after three times he won't be so stupid as to tell her the truth. <laughs> I just don't understand the story, but there you go. This is what happens. In the end, in the end, Samson tells Delilah the secret of his strength. And Samson then goes to sleep, and what happens? Delilah shaves all his hair off. And says, the Philistines are coming. And Samson thinks he could get up and escape again and win the victory in the battle with the Philistines. But in the verse 20 of that chapter, chapter 16, the story of Samson and Delilah, we read, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. He told her the secret of his strength and the Lord had left him. And as a result, he lost his sight, he ended up in shackles, he ended up in prison, and he'd lost his power. But that's not the end of the story. Because you read in the next couple of verses, in 16.22, I think it is, that the hair on Samson's head begins to grow again. The hair on Samson's head begins to grow again. And God restores his great strength. And he killed more people in his death than in his life. We all know about the Apostle Peter. Famous for denying the Lord three times. And in John chapter 21, we read that Peter decides to go back to his old life. He says, I'm going fishing. He'd let the Lord down. He had denied him three times. After only a few hours earlier, professing that he would never deny him. He would follow him even unto death. But he goes back to his old life of fishing. But what happens? Jesus comes. Jesus comes, and you probably know the story, he reinstates Peter into, back into his ministry and his gifting. And Jesus is willing and able to restore gifts and talents that have perhaps been lost or have died or have been neglected. Whatever that gifting may be, whether it's serving or teaching, encouraging, giving help to others, prophecy, administration, God can restore dead things back to life because Jesus is in the resurrection business. <clears throat> and lastly, Jesus can resurrect the backslider. I want to read you a little story, a true story, about a hymn writer. You probably might not know him. His name was Robert Robinson. And he wrote the hymn called, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. These are the words, some of the words he wrote. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. O oh, to grace our greater debtor, daily I'm constrained to be, 
Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. See, Robert Robinson was a, a wild young man in his youth. He lived a debauched life as a teener, teenager. At the age of 17, he went with some friends to scoff at the famous evangelist George Whitfield. But Robinson was so impressed by Whitfield's preaching that he got saved. At 23, he wrote that hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. For many years, he served as a Baptist pastor. But later in life, he got involved with doctrines of Unitarianism, and he strayed from the Lord. One day, he was riding in a stagecoach when he struck up a conversation with a woman. When she realized that he was well informed on spiritual matters, she asked him what he thought of a hymn that she had been reading. To his astonishment, he found that it was the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, which he had written as a young man. He burst into tears and told her, I'm the poor, unhappy man who wrote that hymn many years ago. I would give anything to have back the joy I knew then. The woman assured him that the streams of mercy referred to in the song still flowed. Robinson was deeply touched, turned his wandering heart again to the Lord, and experienced his grace and forgiveness. That same grace is available to all who have failed the Lord. If you will turn back to him, he will abundantly pardon and restore you to fellowship and to serve his cause. You may be a great sinner, but Jesus is a greater saviour. I don't know how your walk is with God, how your daily devotions or your prayer life is, but a verse that we sometimes use in evangelism is actually written to a lukewarm church. It's actually written to believers. It's found in Revelation 3, verse 20. It says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and eat with me. If you've lost your fire for God, if you've lost your way, if you've lost your first love or your joy or your peace, then God can restore the backsliding soul. Jesus is here this morning. He sees your difficulties. He sees your sorrows. He sees your heartache. But his heart goes out to you. And he has come. And he is present this morning to help his people. And he can bring back to life things that are dead or dying. Whether it's gifts, whether you're a backslider, whether it's hope, whether it's fear, whatever it may be, God can resurrect it back in your life. May the Lord bless you. Praise God. God's good, amen. You know, just one touch of the king can change everything. Just one touch. That's all it took for the widow of Nin. Just one touch of the king when he touched the coffin changed everything just one touch with Peter changed everything you know and, and God is the same yesterday today and forever and what what Richard doesn't know is is on Thursday night and I'm glad I didn't um, I was going to take that scripture from the widow of Nin uh, and just share it on Thursday night and I just, uh, I just felt a check in my spirit. And I know why I felt a check in my spirit. Because actually God wanted to share it this morning. Yeah. Because death met life. 
the life giver. And the life giver is here this morning. And uh, we're going to end our service now, but if you want prayer, we'll be here to pray for you this morning. The leadership will come and stand here and we'll pray for you. We'll anoint you with oil. Uh, ask Philip to come as well. Um, why? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the other week we had a, we had a, a wedding in our family. And uh, as some of you will know. But my brother Stephen, um, who you don't know, he, he uh, was a minister. And he went on holiday years ago. Um, and uh, his sons were re recounting this story. He says, yeah, we were, on, we were on holiday, all of us, with my dad. He says, and this young girl was pulled out of the pool, dead. And he says, there they were. They tried to give, it, give a mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. The, f the first aid people came and did what they could. And they said, it's no hope. And suddenly my brother said, do you mind if I pray? And the mother says, no, anything. And he just laid his hands on this little girl's life and just said, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And suddenly she spluttered. And water came out of her mouth. And she began to live. You see, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Friends, there are moments where just one touch of the king changes everything. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for Richard. Thank you for his heart. Thank you for the anointing, the gifting that he carries. Lord, to bring your word faithfully. <laughs> Lord, that day, two processions. But that day <laughs> was a resurrection day. And Lord, you can resurrect in people's lives today things that have, they seem dead. But you're the resurrection and the life. Lord, and you can resurrect dreams. Lord, you can, Lord, your word says to stir up the gift that is within you. <laughs> Lord, you can come by your Holy Spirit and stir up those gifts that are within people this morning. You can come, Lord God, and restore that that is lost in people's lives. Lord, you can come and heal, deliver. You can come and set free. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth that sets us free. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't forget this week, friends, that we have... Um, our friendship group on Wednesday afternoon, it's great. I want to say thank you for your gifts for the food bank. You know, uh, unbeknown to you, that we probably give out uh, in different ways throughout the week 10 food parcels uh, to people that are in need. Um, and that's because of your giving. So thank you. Every little bit helps somebody. And uh, if you're in need or you know somebody in need, uh, please come and ask us and uh, we'll do what we can with the food bank to help people and uh, just help them out just over whatever period of time but thank you and that's on Wednesday afternoon two till four we have the food bank running as well then uh, on Thursday we have our prayer meeting half past seven uh, here and also on zoom please join us we, it's good to be together and to pray and to seek God's face Lord I thank you for this morning Thank you for these wonderful people. Thank you, Lord, for the people watching online. <laughs> Lord, I pray, Lord God, that your word, Lord, will find not only a resting place, but an action place in our life. Lord, I pray your word that is truth and living and active would, would Lord, accomplish that that it was sent for. Because your word tells us that your word accomplishes that which it was sent for. So, Lord... I thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the truth of that. 
So, Lord, we give you all the praise and honor and the glory. I pray your blessing upon each person here, upon any person watching. We pray, Lord God, that your hand would be upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please don't forget our offering bags are here at the front if you are able to give and uh, to the work that Jesus, uh, uh, that the Lord has called us to here. That would be fantastic. Thank you for your giving. Have a wonderful week. Bless you. Amen. Thank you. If you want prayer, please come forward. Thank you. <laughs>